Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Week number five. Happy Rosh Hashanah to those of you that do celebrate it. Um, yes, as you guys were well, well aware, uh, the podcast was delayed because I did want to throw a special segment in there. Um, we have to really kind of visit what's going on with the podcast, what's going on with some of these contenders, right? Let's talk about this season. Let's talk about week number four. Week number four, in the battle of best friends, or should I say, former best friends. David Sutton versus Rob Messia. The train keeps on rolling. It's 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 mesh. Mesh with two decent performances now. 130 to 89. Uh completely catching everybody off of guard. But the man is three and one, and David falls to one and three. That week two outburst. It's, it's it's been a while since we've seen uh, the dead man ra- ra- rise from the dead. Just saying. The only undefeated team left. David Cryer, 107-99. Almost came down to the wire. Geno Smith dropping back to pass. Gets picked off and saves the day for David Cryer. A Monday night miracle was about to happen for two weeks in a row. Oh my goodness. In a game that... Was ugly from the beginning. Nothing really impressive here. Harsh goes to three and one. 95 to Johnny's 84. On top of that, the man himself, Andre Jones. How do you bounce back from losing that Monday Night Miracle? You come back up with the highest point total of the entire week with 143. Almost an entire 100-point blowout to the... Rob Coffey ICU team. It's it's a shame. It's a damn shame. Because I think the Coffey team had some potential and injuries are hard to come by these days. Andre Jones moves to three and one. A man who came in with no wins. It came down to Will Levis. Will Levis disappointed early on and then got knocked out. And without Will Levis in your equation, you can breathe easily. Nicholas, you get the dub. 137 to 123. Paul falls to 2-2. Two and two. Although, Paul, if you kind of look at everything, 2-2 two and two, probably what you expected if you didn't win last week anyway. So it kind of evens out in a way. And last but not least, the man does it again. Alan Williams. Second time this year, he's put up 135 to Alex Matika's 118. This was the Monday Night Miracle that had happened. Still, mathematically, if you both have two people left and one side is already up by 20 points, the safe bet is take that guy. But then I just realized one thing. Jalen Waddell played with uh, Tyler Huntley and Sam Laporta is looking like a bust. And in reality, you still have Jameer Gibbs and the K-9. Now, the K-9 came in against a really daunting task, and that was to run over the Detroit Lions defense. K-9 came through, man. (laughs) Sniffing out three touchdowns. What a recap that was. Let's move on. Waiver wire recap. I do think that there were some intriguing uh, waiver wire bids that that did happen. Some that I want to talk about. Um, One that doesn't even really matter. Jesus Christ, I just I just saw a name on here. Why? Okay. Let's 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 pause for a second. Okay. The the big big waiver and officially somebody is gonna go bankrupt. That somebody is me. Um I think it was time to pull the trigger. Um we're we're talking obviously about Trey Sermon, a former Ohio State running back who has not really panned out in the National Football League. Um, and on top of that, there's some commotion going on. Just bear with me for a second. And the commotion is not about the uh, Trey Sermon doubters. Trey Sermon, as a rookie, I once drafted. In fact, Trey Sermon, I drafted the year I won. And he had nothing to do with that at all. In fact, he was a bus pick. However, I did start him once. And he scored a touchdown. And I was happy for Trey Sermon. Trey Sherman then gets kicked around. He gets cut by the San Francisco 49ers. He then goes on to Philadelphia Eagles. 
He's like buried on the depth chart there. And he found a home last year to Indianapolis. The reason why I um, like Trey Sermon is, is not that I think he's great, but I, I like the situation that he's playing. in. I do think that if I'm trying to justify this $89, which, by the way, this doesn't mean he's taking over the rest of the season, but I like to overbid on speculation I, because we're never going to get a guy that comes in and says, oh, this is the guy. What I can tell you, though, is that he is clearly the number two behind Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor, uh, Indianapolis is downplaying how severe this ankle injury is. Look, we've seen what happened with Christian McCaffrey and all these other guys that are constantly hurt and have tons of injuries, this, that, the other. It's never a good thing. I think that Taylor is going to be out for quite some time. Whether I think it's going to be two weeks minimum. The bottom line is I have to find a running back too because uh, Nick Chubb is coming back. And I can't rely on both Falcons backs. This was kind of, you know, do or die situation. We're going to roll the dice with Trey Sermon for $89. How do I view this bid? It's got to be, listen, if I was down on Carson Steele, if I was down on Kareem Hunt, Trey Sermon, though, with Anthony Richardson, I like, and I'll tell you why. The running lanes are going to be wide open. Trey Sermon was a very successful in the pistol formation, and in the shotgun at Ohio State. That's the playbook they were going to run with A. Rich. Uh, the next highest bid was 55. Make-A-Wish was 55. Rob Coffey was 26. And David Sutton was $9. I went, because I can't stash, I have to start him right away. This bid, I got to go with a C-. Um, I do think that the opportunity is going to be there. If it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, that is a great matchup. The Jags might be quitting on Doug Peterson, by the way. Next. Uh, Tucker Craft going for $26. This was an aggressive bid. I was the second highest at 15. Obviously, I did not win that. Coffee, I give this an A+. Plus. I think Tucker Craft, this this is prop, swear to God, this is probably one of my favorite bids of the entire NFL season. Tucker Craft is the truth. I, I have him in both dynasty leagues that I'm in. Ask her, she can vouch for that. Tucker Craft is better than Luke Musgrave. I've known this, and I am sticking by it. Tucker Craft is the Green Bay tight end to own. And with Christian Watson out of the equation, Tucker Craft, I think, is going to be the second most preferred red zone guy for Jordan Love. I think that Dobbs is always preferred in the red zone. And I think Craft will be there, too. Watson was, but he's gone. A+. Plus. And, and the price, warranted. Warranted by far. I actually had him up for $34 at one point. So, yeah. Alan Lazard going for $17. How do I feel about this? I think, Cryer, you don't have any flex plays right now. With the Devontae Adams bullshit, like, I think we all knew it was going to happen. Except against me in week two. Motherfucker. Anyway, uh, $17 for Lazard. Andre was 15. I was 6. David was 3. The way I view Alan Lazard is the connection with Aaron Rodgers. I think that this guy is... He's like in that like Tyler Lockett, Jawan, Jawan Jennings might be out of that tier now in a good way. But he's like in that Lockett tier where it's like the floor might be seven, but he's if he hits, it's like 15. I know he had the two touchdown game. I don't know if we're going to see that. But Lazard is very, very capable of popping off any given week. Not popping off, but like 15 points, you know? Uh, $17. And for the need, uh, Cryer, I'm going to give this a B. I don't think it's the best, but I don't think it's the worst. Moving down along, $6 for Denver's D uh, against the Vegas Raiders without Devontae Adams. Sign me the fuck up. Uh, A+. Plus. Uh, Justin Fields for Carson Steele. I, I don't know why you're picking him up when you have Jordan Love. Um, whatever. Jalen Polk wasn't bid on. I think it was just picked up. Kind of a speculation ad. Alameda is a curious is for $1. Allen, once again, I'll give it an F. Uh, Michael Thomas, I'll give that one an F. Uh, oh, Mesh, you're, you're finally uh, making bids on Ty Johnson. Uh, he's okay, I guess. And cup of coffee, you should have done this a long time ago. And that's Jordan Winnington, $11. Uh, yeah, I like it. It's an A+. Plus. Eric All Jr. just got picked up. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at transaction trends. Other guys that I think were interesting. 
New England D over Demarcus Robinson. Look, I don't know what's going on with Miami. That might be a good pickup. Justin Watson, we're, for the third year in a row, we're doing Justin Watson. No, thank you. Tyler Conklin or Colby Parkinson. Conklin revenge game narrative. I think that's what Matika's looking at, maybe. Vegas, Vegas D over Green Bay D. That I don't know about. Yeah, I really don't know about that one. Uh, Gusecki got dropped for Eric All. I like oh, I like Eric All in Dynasty. Thank you. Uh, and Jeremy McNichols. This is just a speculation ad. Uh, I don't know if Robinson has an injury or whatever. But look, look, that's all spec. Let's get into the matchups. Let's get into the matchups. All right, next on the list. Okay. This is rivalry week, in case we forgot. And these two are, they're going to do anything that they need to keep their season alive and fight for that second win in hopes of turning their magical season or their unmagical season around. One team really wasn't big on in the season. The other team I was, and the other team has really caught the injury bug, and it, holy shit, it shows. It can't catch a break. Uh, literally, he cannot catch a break. I'm talking about Jonathan, of course, and I'm talking about, uh, hey, who's that? Oh, it's, uh, hey, Patrick. Uh, here we go. Josh Allen or Geno. Uh, this is Josh Allen by a mile. I, I, you know what? I, I don't think Houston really has a bad defense per se, but man, they are, there's games where they look, oh, fuck, yeah, this is, that's what they are, but they seem to be giving up big, big plays. Like, I think that they're just susceptible to the big play, and Josh Allen, big play guy. Uh, Gino looked great on Monday night, but I do think that they're not going to need him to go off in this one, so I'm going to go Josh Allen. Mike Evans, Amari Cooper. Brian Thomas Jr. is breaking out before our eyes. And Michael Pittman Jr. But bad news is Anthony Richardson is back at quarterback, so I can't trust it. I'm going Johnny by a mile here. Mike Evans against Atlanta. Uh, Johnny, we had this discussion about Mike Evans. He looked good against Philly. I don't know. And that's why I said I didn't think he was cooked. I, I looked at the numbers he put up against Detroit, even though the box score didn't look good. The advanced metrics did, and that's why I wanted to uh, pump the brakes a little bit. He plays on Thursday night. Amari Cooper against Washington. Um, the Amari Cooper game already happened against the Giants, but I do think that this is a vintage Amari Cooper game. I have a weird feeling, by the way, in the betting market that Cleveland beats Washington. It's just, it, it seems like a weird spot. Uh, by, by the way, my uh, Brian Thomas Jr. will have himself a game. I can't get confidence in Michael Pittman. And with that being said, give me the Johnny side of the receivers. Joe Mixon. Again, th this is why we don't have injury optimism. This is now probably going to be his third week where he misses. I think Houston really, really wants this guy back. And they need him back as soon as possible, I might add. I don't know if they're going to get him back as soon as possible. Well, what the fuck do we do about that, Nikki? I'll tell you, Johnny. Uh, basically, what we do is we we wait it out. And you got you got most air in there, but I do think that Eckler. Is Eckler on his? Yeah. Oh, that's why. You didn't. Wow. J hold on, Johnny. Okay. Bad management, dude. You said you didn't want to activate Eckler because there was nothing, nobody you could have dropped. You could have dropped Bateman. Bateman's not going to get picked up. You could have dropped, maybe not Tutu. You could have dropped Bateman. Fuck, honestly, at this point, I would have dropped Mostair. Taysom Hill. You got some guys you could have dropped, Johnny. Sorry, I'm getting off track here, uh, Patrick. Uh, okay. Joe Mixon and Mostair might not play, and then it's disgusting Najee Harris. Dude, how the... Okay, okay. Najee against Dallas and Devil Sing Devin Singletary if he doesn't suit up. This, this is just a gross matchup. I'm sorry, boys. Uh, 
okay. Assuming Mixon and most air suit up uh, the Johnny side, uh, Najee Harris will get 29 carries and get like 18 yards out of it. Uh, Evan Ingram, Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers season, it, it's in full swing. Uh, we saw it in week two, and it's been modest since then, but I'm going to go Brock Bowers against Denver. The only way you can attack Denver's D, by the way, really nasty. Khalil Shakir and Key, oh God. And Keon Coleman, uh, Bills boys versus Metcalf and Dowdle. Well, Metcalf, okay. Looks like Ryan Grubb has made DK Metcalf a consistent fantasy option. My only concern with him is none. Patrick, you really bought high on this, and I can't even hate you for it. He got shut down by PS2. He then goes on to New England, 23 points. Goes against Miami, 18 points. Detroit Lions, without a touchdown, he put up 11 points. That's that's getting it done, boys. That's getting it done. Um, yeah, I, I think that this guy is... I know people want to say Deontay Banks, but I think he's, like, good. He's not shut down worthy. Gino was looking for DK Metcalf. Gino even said, hey, dude, we're going to unlock a new version of DK Metcalf. And I said, after all these years, what side? It's the same fucking player. This is starting to almost round into 2021 form. No, I'm sorry. 2020 form because I won with him in, in uh, 2021. And he was kind of a touchdown dependent motherfucker. DK Metcalf it is. Uh, I will take the Metcalf side and the Dowdle side over the Bills guys. Shakir has an ankle injury, and he's kind of a floor play. And who's the other fucker? Johnny, you already know how I feel about Keon Coleman. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to go the DK Metcalf and Rico Dattle side. Seattle against the Giants. Um, the Giants, full disclosure here, they are not what we thought they were. They're bad. But they are not an automatic start defense. I'm getting a million points out of the deal. I don't think it really happens that way anymore with them. And, and Cleveland's defense, dude, they have finally dropped them down in the projections, although they've been, they were great last week. But against Jaden Daniels, how what happens there? I think that's that's the biggest concern. The thing that sucks with the Patrick team is that he will not be getting David Montgomery, who's been probably his MVP at this point in the season. And every and Puka is not back yet. Audric Estime is not back yet. Johnny might get uh, Austin Eckler back. And without Brian Robinson, I think that's a game changer for Johnny because uh, either Mostair or somebody else is going to be benched. And uh, by the way, we'll see how this goes. But if I had to pick a winner, Patrick, I like Gino. I like Brian Thomas, Bowers, Metcalf. That's about it. I really can't get behind. And Gino, I think, is more of a floor play. Johnny's side, I like Josh Allen. I like Mike Evans. I like Amari Cooper. If Mixon suits up and he's good to go, I like him and I like Shakir. Uh, I think Johnny might be able to survive this one. And I'm going to put my stamp on approval on Johnny. All right. I have a confession to make about this next matchup. As I crack my back. Okay. We got two, two competitors, right? Like, you guys see it. We've got two really good competitors. We have Coffee and we have Allen. Again, I'll say I'll say it one more time. We have Coffee versus Allen, and I think that things are heading in the wrong direction. And I don't know what to think about this other team. Maybe I'm not seeing the vision that he's created, but I still don't like it. Um, Allen, I actually had a planned one-minute podcast on this, and I said, you know what, Allen? This is what I said to myself. I said, Alan, there's nothing to talk about. You're literally beating down a dead horse, okay, in this matchup. 
But then I realize something, and I look at who you're starting at the, the receiver position, your RB2 position, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to take this lightly. I'm actually going to give the respect that this league deserves by two very, very highly valued competitors, such as yourself and Robert Coffey. And I look at the projections of this, 94, 95, and I understand, fuck a Yahoo projection. I agree with you, Alan. But we actually might have a ball game. I was, literally was about to breeze through this and said, who the fuck cares? Then I stopped and slowed my roll a bit, and I said, you know what? No. Let's talk about it. The two rookie quarterbacks going at it, Caleb Williams against the Carolina Panthers or Jaden Daniels against Cleveland. Well, clearly one guy is comfortable in the system that he's playing in and the other not so much. You can say it's a Shane Waldron thing, and I think that's uh, warranted. Williams' timing is just fucking off. And I don't think that it's like uh, your casual, oh, no, he'll just, you know, he'll get it done. But the one thing that Carolina is really, really bad at is what he wants to do, and that's hit the perimeter deep ball. That is where his timing is way off. I think his timing has been a little bit better with Rome than it has been DJ Moore. Now, he will probably have all three of the receivers back in. But what does the running situation look like? Because DeAndre Swift was kind of left for dead week three, and then week four has his best game as a Chicago Bear. Roshan Johnson uh, is the goal line back, and Khalil Herbert has been phased out. Then I look at the Allen side. Jane Daniels. Obviously, Allen, I called this happening. I don't remember what week I said. I said week three. And now you finally realize in week four that he's your starter. I, there's no way in hell I'm going against Jaden Daniels. I don't care if it's the Carolina Panthers. Josh Downs and Jordan Winnington versus Jordan Addison and Justin Watson. See, now, when I look at this, I'd be like, what the fuck are you guys on? But this is literally who you guys have to start just because of the injury bug. Josh Downs looked great. And I had to cut him because I had to drop somebody. 18 points. What the Colts said was absolutely true. This is their best playmaker on offense, and it's not even close. Jordan Winnington, guy that I have a lot of in Dynasty. Uh, eight targets. He is playing the slot role, and I think that this is his last hurrah before uh, Cooper Cup comes back. If Cup didn't go on the IR, I think he's coming back after the bye. So with that being said, Jordan Winnington, I think, will be another eight-point guy. I can't get behind these Rams receivers. I think naturally you would think, oh, Sean McVay's going to find the next Puka Nakua. Chances are that, like, there is no next Puka Nakua, okay? Addison and Watson. Jordan Addison's been red hot, scoring touchdowns yet again like he did last season. Justin Watson, Allen, you can pencil in. It's 6.62, pencil in four. So who will score more between Downs and Jordan Addison? The Jets are in London. This Vikings offense is clicking on all cylinders. It's hard for me to go against a guy on a good offense, so I'll go Addison over Downs. Downs also has to deal with Anthony Richardson, and I don't know if I want to deal with that. Allen, by the way, guy, you can cut Anthony Richardson, dude. I don't know why the fuck you're holding on to him. Nobody is fucking buying. Nobody is going to want Anthony Richardson. He's been horrible for fantasy. With the exception of two bombs in week one, he's been fucking horrible, dude. Cut his ass. Like, I, I'm not even going to scoop him up. Hand to God, I will not scoop up Anthony Richardson. Like, you can ship him out, dude. By the way, if you want him in Dynasty, hit my line. Brees Hall, Devon A. Chain. Brees Hall looked fucking horrible against Denver. But then I kind of thought to myself, I think Denver's defense actually might be low-key underrated as fuck. Uh, Von A-Chain. Let's talk about it, Coffee. You, you can't... You, ooh, I know why he's on the block too, man. Because he's going to be on a bye. I'm going Brees and A-Chain because I hate ETN. Is he on the injury report again? Kareem Hunt is back in town and by default might be their best running back. Wow. I, I still got to go Brees Hall and A-Chain. I think that the workload is – A-Chain, it might look gross, but, like, Brees Hall will be all right. Tucker Craft, coffee, this 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 is the guy you want. Tucker Craft will get 15 points. Kincaid will get seven, so give me Craft. 
JSN, Chase Brown, Rashad White, Kenneth Walker. Rashad White is losing uh, snaps. A lot of his stuff came late in that game. Bucky Irving, I think, is going to be the fan favorite in Tampa, and they're cheering his name. But then you got to deal with the canine. Uh, full disclosure, Allen, if I was going to go Lamb or Hill, there was a possibility that I would have pulled up Kenneth Walker as my reach guy, but I had him ranked very highly. I had him ranked right behind Josh Jacobs, who I was very high on. He was a top 15 running back for me coming into the year. Let's talk about JSN. It's literally what he is last year. People want to get excited about Ryan Grubb, but when it comes down to it, guys, let's just focus on a, a quarterback and a play caller, with the exception of like Peyton Manning. Um, I can't think of a time where in modern day fantasy football, correct me if I'm wrong, that two guys can operate consistently in fantasy points per game that are outside receivers. This is why I'm going after JSN. I'm going to spit some knowledge here, okay? The way you break down an offense is that a quarterback can probably support two, maybe three. And when that offense is rolling, it's one guy who's dominant on the outside, one guy who's in the slot, and most likely a tight end. The way offenses are kind of developed now is you have an alpha on the outside, you got a guy who can play the slot and rack up a few catches, and you might have a tight end, and chances are the other dude on the outside, first of all, all these fucking nerds out there have learned or coined the term sacrificial X, Y, receiver. Oh my God, I've always known what that is. No. Somebody fucking told you that. It got leaked out on Twitter. I'm sorry. I'm having a moment here, guys. Bear with me. But I just want to say that, like, oh, my God, that's what they used to clear out space and win it. All right, all right. Shut the fuck up because I'm fucking sick of everybody coining. Whenever a term gets coined, there's always that one Joe Schmo who comes out there at the podcast and they start using it and coin it. I hate these motherfuckers, dude. I'm sorry. I'm very, very, very sorry I'm going off on a tangent. But the reason why I'm saying is this is DK Metcalf is clearly, like I said, the alpha guy who's the big play potential guy. I don't really see them dialing up plays for somebody else like a JSN on the outside. And the funny thing is, like, JSN has played a lot of slot and Lockett's moved outside. And I think it should be reversed. Lockett has always clearly been the slot guy. They, like, rotate in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I just think, bottom line is this. I'm not saying that Lockett, ooh, my back, is fantasy relevant at this stage in his career. I mean, he's, unless you want your eight points, he's like in that Romeo Dobbs tier, Alan Lazard tier. Coffee, you heard what I said, the Romeo Dobbs tier. Um, fuck, dude. Like, This guy is who I thought he was. And I keep seeing him on buy low, buy low, buy low, buy low. But I literally think because he's a guy that's only being used underneath within the chain markers and he's not getting consistent volume, he's not fantasy relevant. I showed you that advanced stat that he's great against press coverage. But if they're not going to take any deep shots down with this guy, Like his route tree is, I don't want to use the term limited because when you're a guy who operates in the slot, you can run a crap ton of routes, but it's not great for fantasy when you have another guy operating on the outside like DK Metcalf. And I think that there's not a lot of offenses that have two alphas on the outside and they can coexist. I think one guy has a design role and everybody else is either going to do crossers over the middle, drag routes, bubble screens. Like the only offense that I... There's a lot more, but off the top of my head that I think of is like Reggie Wayne and Pierre Garcon on the outside with Peyton Manning, like in the uh, Denver Bronco Peyton Manning days. Like that guy literally just looked for, I didn't care who it was, how good you were. I am exploiting where the defense is, and we don't have quarterbacks like that anymore, unfortunately. So with that being said, uh, Chase Brown, what a, what a week to bench him, right, Coffee? Coffee, low key, I do have interest in Chase Brown. So if you are. Looking to move the guy, um, I am here. I I am welcoming you with open arms. Let's talk a deal, kid. Chase Brown and JSN versus Rashad White and Kenneth Walker. 
I don't think it's going to happen again for Chase Brown. I'm going, and literally Rashad White can literally get six points. I will still take the Allen side because Kenneth Walker might be a top 10 running back when healthy. Minnesota D against the Jets. Oh, Karafi and Jets D against Minnesota. Sam Darnold is due for a bad game, but like, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's going to happen. Coffee, the one thing I will say is if there was ever a week to beat Allen, it's this week because he doesn't have Jameer Gibbs. And ETN is is an, a low-end RB2. Rashad White is now an RB3. But the K9 coming back might save his season. Now I have to pick a winner. I'm sorry. I love you, bro. But I got to go with Allen. All right, well, this is an interesting matchup. Um, I, I have clearly seen it. Uh, I, I looked at the quote-unquote starters, and um, one of these men flat out told me, he wants the energy that I bring when I say, you know what, F your team, I'm burying your ass, get the fuck out of here. But then I realized that there are two people that are set come back to injury, and I know what you want to say. I know you want to say that week two was a mirage because it's been all downhill since week two. But I know the dead man. And I know what the dead man could do. In fact, as I am saying the dead man, I am looking in my room right now and I see an Undertaker action figure and he's looking at me straight in the eye and he says, don't you fucking do it. I will choke slam your ass. Because this is his yard, as he told me in 2002. I love the Undertaker. I love you. As far as this dead man is concerned, though, I, I am not burying you. You're not going to bury in a buried alive match. It's not going to happen. All right. Now we're back to Andre. Andre, I'm not going to lie to you, kid. The strategy that your cousin did last year, and it's so effing funny. Because the setup is awesome, and the number one pick for both of you really wasn't the reason for it, but it made everything else work out. And I, I love this team. Absolutely love this team. There's only one guy I still don't like, and he's proving me wrong yet again. You know who it is. It's the man that you have made your profile picture of your team, a so-called king. But what happens when one king meets another king? That was a Derrick Henry, King Henry reference to King David. No good? Okay. Kyler Murray, Brock Purdy. See, I need, I, I need to take a deep breath. I, I really need to take a deep breath because it's like, what the fuck? Like, am I actually going to consider Brock Purdy over Kyler Murray? And yeah, I am. There was there was always something about Kyler Murray this year that just didn't sit right with me. And last week really made me confirm my priors. Look at these numbers, and you tell me if this is quarterback one material. 16, 34, 16, 11. Not to mention the fact... The Rams matchup was a cakewalk matchup. Detroit and Washington. Dude, this guy opened up the first four weeks of the season with three of the juiciest matchups and only hit in one of them. That's a problem. Now, say what you want. David, I know you were high on Trey McBride and he didn't play last week. But the commanders are very susceptible to outside receiver play. And Marvin Harrison. As soon as he scored that touchdown, he thought, oh, dude, this is going to be the game. Let's bring it, guys. And you started clapping. You started jumping up. And, and then what the fuck happened? I, look, I did not have Murray in my top 10 quarterbacks. I did not. I had Jaden Daniels in my top 10. Ask Jacqueline. Ask Jacqueline. He did. Anyway, Brock Purdy. 
10, 15, 31, 16. Seems to me that these two quarterbacks are kind of even in fantasy terms. The reason why I think Brock Purdy's value will go up is without Christian McCaffrey, you can make the argument makes him better or worse. McCaffrey catching out of the backfield, okay, we get it. But I think what's happening now is the following. Debo Samuel is, we know he's going to be injury prone and he's coming back off an of injury and uh, they're, they're using him like they usually would. Debo Samuel should not be running go routes, by the way. Like that is, that he's, he cannot separate. Debo is good at crossers. Debo is good at end arounds and Debo is good at a tosses in the backfield. That's about it. I mean, if you really think about it, he can break fucking tackles and you scheme him up the right way. He's, he's, he's a great guy. Brandon Ayuk. He might get there eventually, but I think Jawan Jennings is is now the guy that they're looking to going deep down the field. And I think if Brock Purdy doesn't have Christian McCaffrey but can rely on three vi- vi- valuable uh, receivers, I think this guy's a buy low. Just throwing it out there. And who am I taking between uh, Purdy and Murray? Uh, I'm going to go Purdy. Kyler Murray is there. I'm throwing a caution flag here. I'm not not red, but but caution. Garrett Wilson, I guess wide receiver one season isn't happening. T Higgins, Godwin and Reed. Andre, I give you a lot of props because I loved your Reed pick, and that is paying off. But I did not like the Godwin pick, and that is also paying off. The thing that I think we forgot about is that touchdowns do happen in the NFL, and Godwin didn't score a lot of them last year, but his target share and his role stayed the same. So I guess everything kind of evens out. Gary Wilson and T. Higgins, can they overtake Godwin and Reed? No. I hate to say it, being a Jets fan. I, I Look, I, I really, really hate to say it, but I saw a stat, and it's it's alarming. I'll share it with you, dead man. Since his rookie year, Garrett Wilson has only had three games over 20 plus points. Yet we've been banking. I like the talent, but we've been banking on this guy to kind of break out. And it's, 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 it's not quite happening, man. Although, although I am not officially burying the wide receiver one dream because look who he had to face. Let's look. San Fran, good defense. By the way, that first drive in San Fran, you thought wide receiver one season was coming. Tennessee, uh, Legereus Sneed, elite corner. New England, Christian Gonzalez, elite corner. Denver, Pat Sertan Jr., elite corner. Now he gets Minnesota, and the guy that I've really liked his whole entire career is Byron Murphy. But Murphy is more of a zone-based corner. I don't think that Garrett's going to have to worry about being bracketed the whole game. But Rodgers keeps saying they're taking away Garrett. They're taking away Garrett, which is why Alan Lazard is going to have to pop off. The one guy I actually think that might actually have a good game against Minnesota is Mike Williams, by the way. And uh, side note, J-E-T-S, up, up, set. You heard it here first. But will Garrett Wilson be a part of that and surpass the 10? Al, uh, I almost, why did I call you Allen? David, I'm going to give him 12 points. T. Higgins, on the other hand, Baltimore. Five points, nine points. This is the T. Higgins we remember. His floor is like nine to 10. But he's got like the confident floor that you have. Like it's not like your boring slot receiver like uh seven for 60 it's always like a random like five for 70 and I like I that's a lot different I'm just throwing like random numbers out but I'm gonna make a statement right now T Higgins will go over 20 points that is my shocker of the week T Higgins will go over 20 points so what does Godwin and Reed have to do Reed with Jordan Love dude is is good I think he gets 23 and Godwin will get 17 so I am gonna go the Andre side Alvin Kamara or Jordan Mason. Clyde edwards Solaire is in, but David Sutton, I know you're uh, phoning into Stefanski into Cleveland and you're asking him, how's my boy looking? Is is he going to get revved up? What is happening here? 
and Stefanski's picking up the phone and he's telling you, go fuck yourself. And he hung up the phone. Okay. Okay. If CEH plays, he's shit. I, I don't want anything to do with this backfield. Sorry. Kamara, on the other hand. David, are you ready for this, bud? You ready, dead man? 19, 43, 14, 21. Alvin Kamara and prime time at Kansas. Yeah. Yeah, it's me. No, no, no. It's, it's the commission. Yeah, I just, I, I, I need, I need to do two things. Yep. No, 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 no. It's, it's legit me. This is not AI filtered. Yeah, Commissioner Goodell. Yeah, no, no, no. Put me through. Hey, uh, Kamish, it's the other Kamish from the only league that matters, the Fantasy League. Yeah, I'm on the phone. I, I want to apologize to the uh, Kamara family because I was really, really down on him. Yeah, no. No, 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 dude. I, I really thought, I thought he was, yeah, Cook. Yeah, for sure. I thought he was just banking on catches. No, yeah, yeah, Clint Kubiak. Yeah, great, great guy. Great guy. I was a big fan of Gary back in the day. Yeah, how is he doing? I know Gary had some heart issues and I'm, you know, generally concerned about his well-being. Oh, yeah, that red meat, it's going to kill you, bro. All right, well, listen, uh, I also want uh, to to acknowledge that Alvin Kamara is not cooked. He is still him, and that Alvin Kamara will put up 28 points. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, you don't have to tell Dennis Allen, because Dennis Allen hears that Taysom Hill is going to get four touchdowns. Just do me a favor right now and tell uh, Clint Kubiak that um, I should have recognized his greatness and that Alvin Kamara is still him. Yep, that's all I needed to know. All right. Take care, and uh, God bless. Thank you. Sorry, I was I was on the phone with Commissioner Goodell, and I I needed to do something. Anyway, I was back on this matchup. Jordan Mason and Derrick Henry. By the way, I'm on a shit ton of caffeine. Jordan Mason and uh, Derrick Henry. All right, let's talk about it. Derrick Henry. Okay, listen, I'm not apologizing about the cooked remarks I made about him. I fuck that. Okay, 13 points for Derrick Henry. Well, I guess when a, there's a hole that opens up and a guy is six, like, it's like the, can we not talk about him? Uh, let me talk about a back I actually like, Jordan Mason. Jordan Mason against Arizona, uh, 22 points. David Kamara is going to have to put the team on his back Monday night, and I don't know if it'll happen. I, David, I actually do like your team this week, by the way. Uh, I, I'm going... The King Henry side. Eric All Jr. Where'd you hear about this guy, Sutton? Is Gusecki hurt or something? Because if Gusecki gets hurt, I like this kid a lot. I have him in Dynasty. I have him in Dynasty. Uh, and then uh, Jake Ferguson against Pittsburgh. Uh, this seems like a really random Jake Ferguson week. Anyway, Jacoby Myers. If Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm going Jake Ferguson. Jacoby Myers and Marvin Harrison Jr. Aaron Jones or DeAndre Swift. Aaron Jones, I think, will have a good game because it's the Jets. Then I look at Jacoby Myers, who is going to get an uptick in volume, and I don't think that warrants Pat Sertan Jr. or 2, PS2, to cover him. I don't see that happening. I don't see a shadow situation. Marvin Harrison Jr., though, is a bona fide stud, and when we talk about guys who are bona fide studs, you look at a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., who is an absolute alpha. I will say Marv has seven catches, 103, no touchdown, though. And that's pretty good. Is DeAndre Swift going to do it again? No. And with that being said, because you're going to get five points out of him, I'm going to go the David Sutton side. Denver's D. Ask Rob Messia what we know about Denver's D, baby. Or New England D is a low-key good counter move. Good chess move here, Andre. Andre, that's why you're a good and uh, valued competitor in this league. Because of because of moves like this. And this is not me being sarcastic, by the way. I know my voice might sound like that. but Dude, if, if, if Miami... If Miami can't get their shit together, dude, this is, this is going to be... New England's not even a bad team. Like, I mean, okay, they're bad. But they at least try. Miami's got no life in them, dude. Like, South Beach, bro, like, the Coke is bad right now because there is no energy. There is no energy in Miami. Even Miami Mike just looks fucking out of it, dude. I'm going Denver's D. They're at home against Vegas. Their defenses look fucking great, dude. 
Denver's D, baby. I told Mesh to draft them and keep them. All right. David, keys to victory. I did not think this matchup would take almost 20 minutes to call, but Garrett Wilson needs to, to unlock that full potential, number one. Your second thing is the flexes. If Andre is at all beatable, and this is a big if, I do think that Myers' uh, target share could go up enough where it might even – if Jones has a, has a touchdown, you're, you're cooked in this matchup. But let's say Jones doesn't score. you got to take advantage of Marvin Harrison over DeAndre Swift because DeAndre Swift's going to be shit. Just saying. The matchup, you are a 20-point underdog to the Jones man. And, uh, David, I think what's going to happen is I think this is going to be your second best output of the season. This is me also expecting Nick Chubb not to return and if Nick Chubb doesn't return, Andre's got too much firepower. The only guy I really don't like on Andre's team is DeAndre Swift. And with that being said, David, I think that Kamara has a great game. I think Garrett Wilson, T. Higgins, and Marvin Harrison have good games. But I think better's better games on the other side of the ball. So give me Andre. Man, oh man, it is always a great time when these two teams get together. I like calling these matchups because these teams always get similarly. Um, roster constructed. I'm, I'm, I'm having a moment. Just give me one second. And so here we go. TJ Stroud versus Jordan Love. Well, we're getting right into it, aren't we? Um, it's funny because I think that both these quarterbacks were similarly priced. Stroud, I think, was a few rounds ahead of Jordan Love. And I'm going to be honest with you. We've only seen Jordan Love in two games, and he's living up to the hype. Stroud, hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like hit or miss. Yahoo is starting to lower his projections. Now, Stroud, has, and I want to talk about this because this is important for this matchup. Stroud in the beginning of the season would be projected 23, 23, 23. And now it has dropped significantly down to 20. In fact, Tuesday, it opened up at 19. However, I think Tank Dell practicing bumped it up a full point. Obviously, when you have three receivers. Stroud is not the problem. The run game is the problem. And the offensive line is not very good. One of the things that we talked about with Chicago and Houston is, yes, this offense looks great on paper. Can the line hold up? Stroud is constantly having to make plays out of the pocket. He is getting pressured. In fact, his two worst games, what do you know, against two teams that could generate pressure. Now, the Bills' defense started off hot and came down to earth on Sunday night. The good news for the Houston Texans is they're at home against Buffalo, which could low-key be a fun game. Vaughn Miller has gotten suspended because he was on PEDs yet again. Will that make a difference? I don't know. If there was one thing that I would think is that, like, Buffalo's defense lost a shit ton of players, but Rasul Douglas is a very underrated player. Their linebacking core hasn't been on paper, shouldn't be that good. But they've been playing some solid defense up until last week. Can it be enough where it can slow down C.J. Stroud? That remains a question mark, but I can tell you this. The Rams will not stop Jordan Love. Jordan Love is going to tear up this Rams defense. He's going to tear him a new asshole. Jordan Love scares the shit out of me, Harsh. I am taking Jordan Love over CJ Stroud. Give me the guy in the cakewalk of a matchup. The Rams D is horrible. This is what we thought was going to happen last year. And now without Aaron Donald, dude, this defense looks 
lost. They look like they are just completely in a different, different, different league and not in a good way. So I'm going to go love. Speaking of, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, Dontavian Wicks, Jamar Chase. Okay, this, this, is, this is good. I like talking about this. Nico Collins has officially been in the top five wide receiver discussion. Point blank. Some people don't like it. Some people do like it. This is a guy I had a strong conviction on. And um, if you were ever doubting Nico Collins and whether he should be a second round pick, and because you were like, oh, but when Tank Dell, when Tank Dell was on your fan, like, I like Tank Dell, so I don't want to do that voice. Stop. Nick, calm the fuck down. Put some respect. No, I like Tank Dell. But if anybody watched what he did against the Colts, last season to get into the playoffs that highlight tape alone should have told you this guy is now in the mike evans tier of alphas like he that's who he reminds me of stefan diggs revenge game scenario they're probably like i think that diggs is going to be the guy it's funny because i think that nico was the guy I had scoring the most touchdowns and diggs would get the most catches i think they'll they scheme him up in really interesting ways and if Buffalo is going to take away Nico Collins, I think we're going to see what happened in the Minnesota game where Diggs is open underneath a lot. But having Tank Dell is definitely going to help open up the offense a little bit more. Dontavian Wicks. Uh-oh. 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 Dontavian Wicks. Harsh, I know you say I buy into the guys who get hot, but look. Without Christian Watson, out of all the Packers receivers who can run routes on the outside, Wix is your best route runner. In fact, you could even make the argument he's the best route runner on this team. The reason why Dontavian Wix did not go very, very high in drafts is why? Because he was behind. He was the fourth guy in, and they're rotating guys in and out, in and out, in and out. Whoa, someone is getting turned on. Um, so, uh, yeah. This is a matchup where he can easily exploit coverage. The only thing. The only thing I could see from making Dontavian Wicks not have a good game, and I am not reverse jinxing on him, you can say whatever you want, is the presence of Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs, like we said, is literally the definition of seven, seven, seven. Whoa, where'd this 18-point uh, game come from? Target share goes up for Reed. It goes up for Wicks. It goes up for Romeo Dobbs. And you know what? Fuck it. It goes up for Bo Melton. Stephon Diggs and Jamar Chase. Oh, I'm sorry. Jamar Chase. He always has a good game against Baltimore. Jamar Chase has had two really good games against really shitty defenses. Baltimore, say what you want. Uh, their defense still doesn't look that great and appealing to me. By the way, speaking of guys who have fallen off a fucking cliff, Marlon Humphrey. This was a guy I was huge on four years ago as the next best corner in the league. He has taken a huge step back. With that being said, hmm. Who has, I think Harsh's guys have more upside. But I like the floor of my guys a lot better. But Nick's rule is if I like the quarterback on one end, you got to like the receiver who's getting paired with it. So for that logic, rule of thumb, if you will, I will take a draw. Jerome Ford, Bijan, Chuba Hubbard, Javante. Full disclosure, Harsh. If Jonathan Taylor cannot go, Trey Sermon will get the call. Trey Sermon with Anthony Richardson, I think, will be treated just like Jonathan Taylor as far as usage goes. And I actually think that he will be the Zach Moss of this year. Whoa! I'm sorry, I had to do it. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm like, I'm not saying that Trey Sermon is a good running back, but what I am saying is the situation is going to give him opportunities to score. Bijan off the injury report against Tampa. Uh, I, I'm going to give you the stat line right now. Bijan Robinson, 11 carries, 35 yards. Bijan Robinson, 6 catches, 35 yards. So 35 plus 34 is 6. What did I say? 6 catches? I don't feel confident in this matchup. Vita Vea is back, and that boy eats running backs. The only way I think Bijan gets there is if he scores a touchdown. And now we have to have this discussion 
about Bijan. And I'm going to tell you this harsh. And by the way, if you think what I'm saying is, is asking you to buy low on Bijan, take it for what it is. But I'm going to speak some truth about Bijan. We need a pep talk here. Bijan Robinson was, I only did it because I didn't want Christian McCaffrey. That was the right call. But Bijan Robinson, I think, is the next Ricky Williams. And what I mean by that is this is not a knock on Bijan Robinson, by the way. It sounds like a knock. It's not. I think we put Bijan on a pedestal for two years in a row that this guy would be like the elite tier, like Christian McCaffrey 101. Oh my God, Bijan Robinson. How could you? Like, you know what I'm saying? But in reality, I think he's always going to be in that Jonathan Taylor tier of running backs, the tier just below it. I think he's always going to be like a back end first round pick, mid first round pick, but never a top three first round pick because this is now the second year in a row. I think he's been picked in the top four. Or top three. I don't remember what Andre had last year. But with that being said, I think we kind of have to adjust our expectations. I think he's a good workhorse running back, and I think he can handle a workload. But this offense is... Yeah. They have a good offensive line, too. Like I, They ran at Algier a lot, and I don't know, maybe was that the game plan? or Hope, I, I, Look. I am hoping Thursday night that it was to limit Mr. Robinson and his uh, touch workload. Yeah. That's kind of how I would fucking put that in, <laughs> in a perspective. Flat out. Uh, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you guys. Yeah. I, I just think that the volume is going to keep him, keep him relevant. But they're uh, okay. <clears throat> if we want to justify his bad, it's not even bad. It's just not first round pick good. Pittsburgh tough defense. Philly uh, not a tough defense. He didn't score a touchdown, but he looked great in that game. Kansas City tough defense. Got there on the touchdown. New Orleans, the workload wasn't there. He carried seven times and caught four. I think maybe it's because they didn't want to overuse him. He looks great in the passing game, though. Like, very, 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 very deadly in the passing game. And now he gets Tampa. The The schedule softens up. It's it, it's Tampa, Carolina, Seattle. Oh, boy. Yeah, he might be a buy low. I don't know. Uh, but the guy I do think I'm very concerned about on the harsh Godini side is the Chuba Hubbard guy. He scares me. I like the Bears' defense, but they are getting gashed up the middle. And Chuba, did I hate to say it? Hot take. He could outproduce B. John Robinson in this matchup. Uh, I don't think Jonathan Brooks is coming back right now, so that could be a problem. Uh, if I have Trey Sermon, Jerome Ford versus uh, Javante Williams might be a wash. But if I have Trey Sermon, I'm going to take my side with the running backs. Pat Fryermuth or Trey McBride. Listen, Pat Fryermuth scored. It's not going to happen. Give me Trey McBride. And then we have Malik Neighbors in concussion protocol, by the way. Versus the Ohio State boys, Terry and Chris Olaf and Drake London. All right, so Drake London. London calling, right? That's what we're going with, Harsh. Whoa. Okay. Drake London could, this could be a week where he actually looks very, very good because the team that blitzes the most in the entire National Football League is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that means if they blitz the most out of any team, they're susceptible to getting sacks, but they're susceptible to giving up big plays. That could be busted coverage with Drake London or Mooney. But it could also mean screens to B. John Robinson or Algier out of the backfield. And I think with Todd Bowles dialing up blitz, 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 blitz. Drake London doesn't have to worry about being press coverage. Bowles is like uh, Flores. Bowles sends a lot of zone blitzes as well. And when you send a zone blitz, one of the first read plays that's extremely dangerous if you don't have it covered is a slant over a zone blitz. Because if that quarterback puts it right on the money and and away from coverage of the linebacker, Drake London could take a slant, go like, like I wouldn't be surprised if we watch up and Cousins goes, he got, puts a man in motion, 
and London takes it for like 38 yard game. Like those are the type of defenses that get blown up. Like Flores, Flores's defense has not gotten figured out yet, but I could definitely see like guys going off against Minnesota as the season progresses. And I that's that that scares me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. But neighbors in concussion protocol, I, I doubt he plays. We haven't seen anybody come back from a concussion yet this week. Uh, I'm sorry, after one week. Excuse my language. Terry and Olave. Olave, we got to monitor. Harsh, I don't know if you're keeping up to date on anybody else's players, but Olave, Olave looks hurt really bad with a hamstring. And because of that, and because of that, I know it's a Monday game. I might have to put in Worthy. I think that's my backup plan, my plan B, if you will. Terry McLaurin is now getting a lot of targets. Terry McLaurin, I think, will finally have his best season. It's uh, Dude, he's getting, like, a crap ton of targets. My only concern about this game, nah. Nah, I'm not that concerned. I'll go my, my end of it. And then Chicago D versus New Orleans D. Give me the Chicago D. All right. Harsh, I'm not going to lie to you. This is going to be a great week. I am projected 117. They have you at 98. I do think that the... I think that the where they're wrong on their projections is Chuba Hubbard should be a lot higher. He should be a guy getting projected for 12, not 9. And I think that New Orleans D is kind of underrated, but, you know. Uh, Harsh, you're 3-1, and one, my guy. You've had some duds. You had two victories that were dud victories, and you got away with it. But a, a win is a win, and I wish you the best of luck. I got to go with my boys on this one because we need the victory bad. This is rivalry week. We cannot drop to one and four. We need to get two wins. We need to go to two and three. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Well, what do you know? What do you know? Two boys who saw Creed. They get to face each other. Yeah. Those two men saw Creed, and they are the second favorite matchup. Look, two and two versus three and one. Mesh, Mesh is, when you talk about making a statement and saying to, to everybody, hey, I belong in this league, he's making that statement. He is literally making that statement right here. Wow. Mesh, three and one. Three and one, big daddy. Lamar versus Dak. Give me Lamar. CD, Waddle, Ayuk, Deontay. I'm going the CD Waddle side, and not because of Waddle. Lamb will, will for sure have a great game. Ayuk will not, and Deontay will, but I don't think that... Or, or, hold on. Deontay Johnson since Andy Dalton. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Impressive! Uh, Alright. Uh, it might be a wash, actually. I'll, I'll change it to a wash. Kyron. Mr. I'm going to score a touchdown in every fucking game that I play in. Yeah, that Kyron Williams. Let's stop and talk about why we were fading this guy. I Look, Matica, I'm kind of pissed he fell to you. I really wanted Kyron Williams. I took him right before me, too, on that trade. Dude, this guy is as consistent as they come. He is a great football player. Not really, though. I mean, he's great at scoring touchdowns. And he will score against Green Bay, by the way. Kyron Williams might have, against Green Bay, he might have like 35 carries. B. Rob Jr. He's sitting out with a knee injury. It's the first time we've heard about it. Anytime you see an injury in uh, 2024, you freak out because it's like, oh, it's nothing. And then, boom, goes to IR. So we'll monitor it. But it's against Cleveland. And, yeah, he'll get like 15 points. What? Okay. Josh Jacobs and Ty. Oh, I'm I'm going the Matica side here. Sorry. Tyler Conklin and Isaiah Likely. 
Whoa. Like, they are likely, yeah. Well, dude, week one. It was such a long time ago. Uh, I'll take likely, though. Uh, Conklin, I can't get behind. Um, yeah. Just, just, it's a, it's a no for me, dog. Romandre Stevenson has some guy who should be sold immediately is, is Romandre. With the exception of week one and two, he is, oh, God. Yeah. Although this is this might be wait a minute, I think this might actually be a good week for him. Fifteen for Ramadre George Pickens, Matica. What did I tell you? Last week was the week. Go over a hundred. I don't even remember what I projected in the matchup column to be honest, but I know I said he was going to hit over a hundred or a touchdown, and he hit over a hundred. The fumble was was really really stupid. By the way, I don't know if you saw that highlight. Dallas is susceptible to big plays. I think they might have to throw. Guess what? George Piggins might have his best game of the season because Dallas's defense can't defend. Mesh, are you really starting Cade Otten? We're going to pause. Uh, th this is over. Give me a All right. All right. Matchup of the week. The only team left undefeated. None other than David Cryer. Taking on Paul. Paul is top three in points. Cryer is not. But at the end of the day, one team is undefeated. The other is not. Cryer, you have some bad luck here because I am currently filming this at 9.05 p.m. on Wednesday, October 2nd. And by the looks of it, you've got Devontae Adams still in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause. I want to make a statement. I am not going to do a take of this matchup, and I'm going to explain why. For multiple reasons. The Cryer team not only is now being put in a really, really fucking weird spot with Devontae Adams. There are bye weeks, and there are injuries. I fully expect George Kittle to play, but I do not expect Jonathan Taylor to play. Which would leave... James Cook and Braylon Allen as the 1A, 1B situation on his running back side. And there's a lot of question marks with Keenan Allen. Rashid Shaheed might be legit. Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is like in that Lazard tier. It's like literally, it's literally nine. He, like, I, I hate these guys, though, man. It's like they're bi week filling. Judy's in that Lazard, Lockett tier of like receiver. Or it's like if they're not doing it, they're not doing anything to like, they're just not doing anything. All right. But I want to make a statement. I'm fully on board with one of these teams. Cryer, Cryer, I think your team is okay. But when I fully went in on your team, you had Devontae Smith without A.J. Brown. Devontae Adams was still playing football. Right now he is not playing football. So we just lost two guys this week. And I am not here to ridicule a team that has bye weeks and injuries. I'm not doing that. But I want people to acknowledge a team that is, is deadly. With a capital D. And that's Paul. Burrow is getting his shit together. The Bengals offense is fully operational. To quote the Death Star shit. But when I look at the Paul team, another thing that just happened, we'll have to see if it continues. Paul, I'm pretty sure you noticed this against our matchup. Travis Kelsey was actually being used again. I still don't think he is what he once was, but there is a sense of urgency in Kansas City after the Rashi Rice injury. Guess who's going to have to be involved underneath? You guessed it. Your favorite Caucasian dick. A Kelsey dick. Travis's dick. And I do think that on Monday night, with the world watching, and his beautiful, absolutely beautiful girlfriend watching in the stands, people are going to bet Kelsey touchdown, and they are not going to be disappointed. Guess who's scoring their first touchdown of the year, Paul? Yeah! Dude, I, I'm, I'm painting the picture right now. Painting the picture right now. I remember one time, Paul, Monday night, you were only 
down by nine. And I remember it was the game Kelsey scored three touchdowns. I think I could see the same thing happening. I don't think, Cryer, in case you're wondering, I don't think you're winning this week. I think you will finally lose. And I think that after this performance, Paul, by the way, Connor, great pick. Zach Moss, even with Chase Brown having that game, Moss still got you 15 points, bro. Like, granted, that could have been a Carolina matchup thing, but I think he's fine. Flat Flowers concerns me, and I, I that's why nobody wanted him. Lamar Lamar's an asshole. He can't support wide receivers. But this is bad. Eight sixteen three one. Okay. The only guy I'm worried about in this lineup is Zay Flowers, just because. Oh no! Excuse me. DJ Moore revenge game. Is is this the week, Paul? I know he got he bailed you out on a touchdown. Maybe this is the week, but I like this Paul's team. This Paul team is fully operational, and I think Paul, you will go to three and two. I really wanted to give you a take, but I really can't with a lot of injuries, and he's got stuff in that lineup that don't look like they're going to be playing. So, Paul, just giving it to you straight, buddy. Alex.